Hi out there in Freeman land. Uh, a lot of people seem to uh, be having a bit of difficulty with the name thing and uh, what I'm trying to do with these uh, little video clips on YouTube is to, to try and limit the length of uh, the uh, video to from between 10 minutes and uh, 20 minutes so that people don't get too bored and um, don't get overloaded with a lot of information. So although I have put stuff out there on the name, uh, a lot of people are still trying to argue the name. So let's delve a little deeper into it and see just how complex this name issue is. Um, so why do we need a name is, is what we're going to be addressing in this uh, um, video. And how does the name identify us or does the name in, in identify us? So we're going to use quite a few different sources here, but um, Butterworth's uh, is our New Zealand Law Dictionary, and it defines name as a word or combination of words by which a person, place or thing, a body or class, or any object of thought is designated or known. Now we all know that a person is not us. So let's look a little bit further into that because from from when I was a little nipper um, the the uh, the thing that I got to taught to was to respond to the name and uh, so the moment your parents called you you responded to your name and um, I think most people would agree that this is how we became conditioned into um, accepting a name but however our printout or extract in Australia or birth certificate uh, long form short form birth certificate in America shows that we were only given Christian or first names that that is the the record that our parents filled out and handed into the registrar shows only first names yet all paperwork that comes to us is addressed to Mr. Doe and once again in the all capitals Sometimes it's just Mr. Uh, and not in all capitals because that's another little trick they use on us. And in the past, all, all in the free man movement have argued about the all caps name, but it's got us nowhere. So we have to have to look a little bit further to see why. So Butterworth showed us um, the first definition I pulled up there that a body has a name. And so if you go down to the local cemetery, you will see it's. That, that all the tombstones are in all capitals. Ships have a name for identification purposes so that uh, uh, when they're sailing the seas or they have a manifest that uh, the people know how it's coming. Corporations have names. And towns have, have a name. Now Butterworth showed us all those. Out of all those, out of all those um, pictures I've just shown you, there was two things that really, really stand out. And out of the definition, it was very obvious that man was not mentioned in the definition. All of those that were mentioned were spelt in all capitals. Did you remember that? They were all spelt in capitals. Therefore, we have to come to the conclusion that if we respond to the name... Number one, we are dead. Number two, we are a corporation. Or number three, we are a ship or a vessel. Or we are the whole three, and I believe we are the whole three of those things. So therefore, if we are dead, we have died in test state. We didn't leave a will. So if we didn't leave a will, a whole different set of circumstances is going to come into being. Someone needs to administer our estate. If we're a ship or a vessel, we come under maritime law. So you can see how sneaky they've been in getting us into, into their system. And if we're a corporation, we can be dragged off to court. So under the three different, um, the three different things there, we can see now how they are attacking us and how they are getting us to respond simply by the words. Now, Bovier's online law dictionary, under a name, no man can have more than one Christian name. 
Though two or more names usually kept separate as John and Peter may undoubtedly be compounded so as to form in contemplation of the law but one. So we'll have a look at an example there. If we hyphenate our first names, uh, John hyphen Henry, they become one in contemplation of the law. Okay, so uh, that may be worth knowing. Our born records show that we were given first names only. So if you check your printout, the, what your father and mother did, um, what they put on the, um, on the information going into the uh, registrar, we were only given first names. But our birth certificate was where we suddenly had a surname or a family name. And so I believe it is our surname that is causing the problem. Not the first names, or maybe maybe the first names as well, but it's the surname that is the major problem, and this is what we have to address. So we'll go to another source that, um, that we quite often use, and that's the Bible. So what does the Bible have to say about names? Some of you may find this a stretch too far, but just accept what I'm giving out as information, Store it away and uh, don't become angry or bitter or just just accept that maybe we have been misled all the way. So because this is going to be a stretch for some of you, I can assure you. Exodus 20.2 I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Now, what if this is a code? What if... It meant that the all caps name was keeping us in slavery. Now, I've been right through the Bible, and there is only one word in the whole Bible that is capitalized, and it is Lord, L-O-R-D. Now, I know that it is the capital's name that is keeping us in slavery, so what if this code was interpreted, or what if the Bible was interpreted the way that I'm interpreting it, and saying that if we stop using that name, we come out of the house of slavery. We're no longer slaves. Exodus 20.7 Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Once again, what if we are guilty if we take or use the name? If we use the Father's name, if the Son uses the Father's name, Lord, we're guilty, it says. How important is the name? Is 
Now, looking at that little clip, which is another area uh, where uh, a lot of clues are given is in movies and songs and books and that sort of thing. We get a lot of clues from uh, from these things. Now, the postmaster or the registrar considered the name very important. That's why he said uh, it'll be a shilling, uh, a shilling to tie up at the dock and we will need your name. So what he was saying there, uh, another name for birth or to tie up at the dock is to birth. Now, we received a birth certificate, B-I-R-T-H, but when a ship ties up at the dock, it's birth, B-E-R-T-H, virtually the same thing. Um, maybe they just put the I in to confuse us on birth. So we were given a birth certificate, but to tie up or birth at the dock, you also needed a name. So rather interesting that they're giving these clues away in movies all the time. The corporation must have a vessel, corporation, or a state to attach its charges to. They cannot put the charges against the living man. They can only do it against the corporation, or the vessel, or the estate. So we now need to discover how we can be identified without a name. Now, this could be tricky, or maybe not. Identity. Evidence, sameness, it is frequently necessary to identify persons, which is the corporation, and things. In criminal prosecutions and in actions for torts and on contracts, it is required to be proved that the defendants have in criminal actions and for injuries been guilty of the crime or injury charged. And in an action on a contract that the defendant was a party to it. It's a bit gobbledygook for most of you to understand, so we'll look for a a better one, which is Butterworth's uh, definition. This is very precise. A doctrine that holds that an individual that acts as a company is treated as one and the same as the company. Such a person is not merely acting as a servant or agent of the company. He or she is an embodiment of the company. The doctrine of identification is thus distinct from vicarious responsibility. So right there, they're telling us that if we respond to the name, we are the company. Or if you look at that word, an embodiment of the company, body is contained within that word. So we are the body, the dead body of that company. But we have brought, we have brought the action to life by acting as a servant or agent of the estate. The doctrine of identification is also the traditional method by which companies are held liable in most countries under the principles of the common law. According to this theory, the solution for the problem of attributing fault to a corporation for offences that require intention was to merge the individual within the corporation with the corporation itself. I think that pretty much sums it up um, that if we respond to the name we are the estate. So what we have to conclude from this is that a name gets us into trouble. Absolutely no doubt we end up paying for it. If we identify with the name, it gets us into trouble also. So as they have set up a trust vessel corporation, how on earth can we take some sort of control over this beast that is controlling us? Well, we'll need to look at how a deceased estate works. Just in case you're not aware of how it works, well, first of all, we have to have a body. So there's John Doe, and he's left his estate there. Now, the estate must have beneficiaries, and it also must have an executor for the estate. That's the threesome. Okay? So when a person dies, their estate is administered by personal representatives. If the deceased person made a will their personal representatives will be the executors appointed in the will. Now, that could be relatives or anyone. Where there is no will, personal representatives are appointed by the court under letters of administration and are called administrators. And in this case, the person's estate will be distributed according to the laws of intestacy. Okay, so you can guarantee that we did not leave a will when, when we were declared dead, um, or lost at sea after seven years. 
Okay, so they will have to appoint someone for us. Now, the Wills Act 2007 shows us in the interpretation, for the purposes of, of this Act, unless the context requires another meaning, personal representative means administrator, executor, or trustee. So there you have it. We have a personal representative who could be an administrator, executor, or trustee working for the estate. Okay, but it would appear that the only way to get around this name identity problem is to come in as the person's personal representative, which it tells you in the, um, in the Wills Act there. So if we come in as the person's personal representative, um, it's not as easy as it looks, but how should we go about it? Let's look again to Scripture. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, she, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay, what's the name that we need to ask in? Okay, let's go back to our printout and have a look at what it says on this is my particular um, printout here. And right at the top, oh, hold on, we'll just go back a second there. In the first column you see when born and where born. Okay, by the end of that document, I am no longer alive, I can assure you. But I was born. And at the top there it says Christian or first names only. Bear that in mind. The next down there in brackets says, if child stillborn to be noted in this column. Well, it definitely looks to me like my father has noted my first names in that column. Therefore, William Henry is dead. And there's only one other name left up there, and that's Christian. So it seems obvious to me that we need to be Christian if we're going to go in as the person's personal representative, we need to be Christian. Okay. Christ is the person's personal representative, or Christian, as the printout suggests. Now, so if we were writing to someone, um, a letter could perhaps look like this. If you look up in the right-hand side here, person's personal representative, Christian. Now, you're going to notice something here, security number. That is your printout number. You'll notice there is a slash there. Okay. Notice to cease and desist. This is uh, what I use for traffic tickets. So, um, we the underwriters with clean hands and equity hereby serve notice that unlawful entry by mercantile agents without claim of right leaves the underwriter a vulnerable adult. Okay, now the, the last part of the letter... Um, once again here, I'm going to point out, if you can see this, John Henry Doe. Now, that is the birth certificate number. So, any unlawful attempt by Merkle Tile agents to access our license in commerce, that is our license in commerce, the birth certificate there, which is distinct from the printout on the previous page, which had a slash there. So now what we're doing is identifying the two parties so that everyone can see the difference between Doe the Corporation and Christian, the de, the, uh, de jure party. Now, Crown here will sign it, Sovereign there, and person's personal representative is Christian. Okay, so now we have the three parties here, Crown, Sovereign, and Person's Personal Representative. So in the Crown one, all you would put is the spell the name in all capitals. The Sovereign, you would just put your initial, initials, but the Person's Personal Representative, you would sign as Christian. And if you did your letters like that, I think you might have a different result. Okay, now let's just wrapping up. We need to define what death means in the law. So we'll have a look in the legal dictionary, the freedictionary.com. The law recognizes different forms of death, not all of them meaning the end of physical life. Oh, 
Isn't that interesting? Not all of them meaning the end of physical life. Is that not a big clue? So well, look, the term civil death is used in some states to describe the circumstances of an individual who has been convicted of a serious crime or sentenced to life imprisonment. Okay, civil death, life imprisonment, sounds like that is the sentence we have been given. Ah, we go to another one. Merriamwebster.com, civil death noun, the status of a living person equivalent in its legal consequences to natural death. Oh my goodness. The status of a living person equivalent in its legal consequences to natural death. They're telling us there we have died a civil death. And specifically, it means depriva deprivation of civil rights. So I think you can see now that the corporation, we need to identify ourselves quite separate to Doe the corporation. Now we need to look at how we come back to life. And this may upset some people, but so be it. Just take it as information. Resurrection. Capitalized. The rising of Christ from the dead. The rising of Christian from the dead? Hmm. Often capitalized, the rising to life of all the human dead before the final judgment. The state of one risen from the dead. My conclusion, if we are born again Christian, do we rise from the dead and inherit the Father's estate? I'll leave that up to you to decide.